So I've got Vito Gordiosi with me today. He's an Australian champion. His confidence is riding so high. It's been a tremendous fight for him. And coach of many kids over more than two decades. So thanks for hanging out with me today, Vito. Thanks, Adam. I'm a former champion now. Former champion. Former well, Australian. Well, once was and <laughs> once always will be, I reckon. Both strong punches. And Cavaro, he's down again. Vito Gordiosi is the new. Australian middleweight champion. So what I wanted to chat to you about, we've been talking just before we started filming, was about um, your, what is it that inspires you to get up every single day and deal with kids that grow up in a TikTok, Instagram sort of world? How do you inspire kids like that? Well, it's about healthy lifestyles. Um, when I first set this gym up, it was in memory of my my coach that had passed away and um, that was um, 22 years ago this gym here and since then I've been delivering healthy lifestyle programs within our community and that's what he my understanding is that's what he provided for you was inspiration exactly. and so I was reading I was reading something that when when you first came to him that he said to you where do you want to get with boxing and you said something like national level and he said well go away then that's correct yeah. and he said unless you want to be world champion yeah, you're in the wrong place. That's correct. And that, that was all about not handicapping the system. Back in the days, you know, everyone smoked, everyone drank. Yeah. You know, it was all about not handicapping the system. And that's what he did for me. He got me on a straight and narrow and got me, got me guided. And, and I went from there, from strength to strength. So that, so you're, you're channeling Father Crocker every day, are you, when you wake up? Correct. It's exactly what I do. I pass down what, the knowledge that I got through my coaches. I had some good coaches in the days. Father Croc was a great mentor, great yeah. mentor. He'd done, he done, done a lot for the kids in Berkeley. And um, after his passing, I continue to do it. And that's what we do. We're never going to deliver 200 million world champions or Australian champions, but we're going to give kids a dream, mate. And if they've got a dream, they'll stick to a healthy, life, healthy lifestyle. That's um, awesome that you mentioned that, because I think I agree that having a dream is, uh, and having a plan and a vision or a goal at the very least is the starting point, but then having someone to guide you on that is I think crucial, keep you, keep you on, that, on that plan. And that's what we do. It's about guiding kids, you know? Like, not all kids are gonna be world champions. Or they're not all gonna be state level or Australian level or world-class level. But if they've got that dream, that dream will go for a lifetime. Yeah. You know, if they learn to train hard from an early age, it normally develops into their workplace, and from their workplace it goes into their um, family life, and, and it goes from there, that killer instinct. Yeah. Never leaves you. Yeah, and you were just saying that um, not only are you training these kids, but you're actually giving them, them opportunities with work as well. Correct. A lot of kids that come from my, at my gym, I've got a lot of um, business clients in the community that I, that I know, and, and a lot of people are ringing me up for kids that want to work, yep. you know, in the, in the, in the um, building industry and trade industry. And um, if I can find a, a child that's, that's dedicated in the gym that just hasn't got that skill of reaching a boxing ability and wants to work, that's what we do with them. And you can tell if someone, if a kid can turn up every day and give you 100% every single day, like you have kids coming five days a week, right? Correct, yeah. So if you can have a kid that can train for, and give you 100% every day, that, then you're going to vouch for that kid. I'll only vouch kids that give me 100%. Yeah. Um, and 100% has been, as you know, it's been organised, been punctual. Train them five yeah. days a respect. week, respect, and the list go on like that. Yeah, not yeah. hot headed, not, not hot headed, it, con Mate, in control. I, I'm totally against, and I deliver a lot of bully awareness out of the gym. Yeah, I'm totally against thugs. I'm totally against any person like that in our gym. So, then that's probably why being a being a doorman, being a bouncer, being a police officer has nat come natural to you because you've got that strong moral compass. Well, that's correct. Has I'm it always been like that? Well, I've dealt with conflict all my life. Yeah. When I say conflict, I've dealt with a, a professional boxing career, an amateur boxing career, 18 years of uh, working on doors, 10 years in the police. You know, I've dealt with angry people all my life and I, and, and I know how to deal with these people. Yeah. You know, and I, and I don't want that in my lifestyle anymore. We don't need to deal with angry people. We need yeah. to live a, a pretty humble life. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So how have you how have you turned that around? I understand that um, you know that hasn't always come naturally to you. You know, living a Zen life. How how have you how have you managed to achieve that? Well, 
it's it's been difficult. You know, I was medically discharged from the police ten years ten years ago, and um, since then I've, I've 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 had to live a healthy lifestyle due to my post traumatic stress disorders, and um, living a healthy lifestyle um, um, is very important for mental health. So is. Is coming and training these kids and, and helping them helping you as well? It's definitely helping me. Yeah. It's been it's it's definitely been part of my um, return to work program from yeah. day one. So um, this this gym has been a handful over the years, but it's also been uh, you know God's blessing that I continue to come here because it's helped me. Yeah, and you were just saying that you've just come from the beach. Is that another thing? A bit of an outlet for you? Correct. I like yeah. I like to run and then I like to walk. Yeah, and um, as much as the mind, body allows it, mindful, yeah. mindful walking, I call it. No. Mindful walking, mindful yeah. walking. You know, it's it's good that's, about resting your mind. That's a great term. Yeah, I can't train like I used to, but I still try and push like I used to. Yeah, so it's um it's very good for me. That's awesome. So what um what I'd love to know is what was boxing for you? Go back when you were training hard and you were you know you had that dream. What was boxing for you then versus what is boxing for you now? Boxing's always going to be my lifestyle. Um, it was 100% my lifestyle when I was training. You know, professional careers are hard. The, to deliver a professional career, it's, it's hard work. You, you could, you're training six days a week. Yeah. Um, since having traveling. Re- traveling, you're traveling all over Australia. Sometimes, like world, I was yeah. reading about one of the bouts, you had really poor timing and really poor preparation. Yeah. For- I mean, back in our days, we took fight on, fights on, on short notice. Yeah. You know, we, we had to take them on short notice. There was nothing around back then. We just took them as not we like, come. Not like now. There's no. a lot of money in it now. Well, back in our day, we didn't even know what a fight plan was. We didn't even know who we were fighting. You, know, yeah. you turned up and you're fighting tonight. Yeah. That's it. You know, that's the way it was. So, so boxing for you was a was a dream. It was it was a, like it was a purpose. It sounds like um, it was your goal and, and things like that. What what is it for you now? What is boxing? Well, it's like it's it's now? still it's still a lifetime. Uh, it's 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 still something that I love to do and I love to deliver. And so it's going to be a life a passion for me. Like my wife said the other day, she goes, "You couldn't give it away. You would, you yeah. wouldn't be Vito without boxing." Yeah, you know. And so yes, it's a it, part of you. It's part of me, and this is what I do. So, but it's it's a it seems to me like it's a part of you, uh, in the sense that it's your avenue of connecting with with kids. That's correct. And, and, yeah. and connecting with mums. I know you have a mums group. I know you have adults groups. Like it's not just kids too. You're connecting with people of all of a large range. Well, people and helping don't. People. Well, people don't really understand what boxing. That when they hear the word boxing, it's all about contact. Well, it's not. Yeah. It's not all about contact. It's about like like going back to that healthy lifestyle. Going, giving a kid with a disability a dream. You know, it's it's about having kids on a straight and narrow, educating. I educate a lot through this gym. We educate bully awareness. We educate stranger danger. We talk about road legislation. Uh, having my police- Healthy lifestyle. Yeah, healthy lifestyle. Having my police background is uh, giving me the opportunity to do this within a, within a boxing environment. And, yeah. it's, and it's great. You know, they're training, they're learning, and we're delivering, and it's great. I, I love how what you're doing is taking a bunch of kids and inspiring them, but you're also occupying them a lot of their time. They're going to be physically wrecked and exhausted. So well, that's my plans with these kids. Yeah. I plan to make them tired so they go home to sleep. Yep. So if they go home to sleep, they're keeping off our streets at night. And if they're eating nothing but junk food, they're going to feel it on the floor the next day. That's right. If they're handicapping their system with alcohol or drugs. Yep. It's not going to work. It's going to affect them. Correct. Yeah. And they know And you're that. making that really clear to them that that's going to well, affect it's, Sorry, I'm yeah, cutting you off, but no, no. but it's it's very simple. And um, I will not allow a child in this gym if he's handicapping in the system. Yeah, I will not allow a child into a boxing program if he's actually a handicap in his system. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance of alcohol and drugs in my gym. Yeah. So it's up to them what they really want to do. You know, at the end of the year they get six weeks off. They have a, I think it's a 50, uh, 49 week program. At the end of the year they have six weeks off. They can do what they want in six weeks. And when I say do what they want, um, if they like a drink of alcohol, they can have a drink of alcohol. Their business, but and they're overage, obviously. And they're overage <laughs> at that. At that, yeah. that if they're overage, if they're under the age, no alcohol yeah. in my gym. Yeah. Yeah. And so, if if there's a parent watching this who is, has maybe got a kid that's struggling with motivation or. Um, struggling physically we're seeing a lot of this in the clinic where you get a lot of um, deconditioning 
a lot of postural issues, a lot of neck and um, shoulder fatigue issues from just spending a lot of time on devices. And um, we, uh, we went into, I went into a preschool recently and there was a bunch of kids that couldn't climb, couldn't hang, couldn't reach their toes. This is all um, unprecedented in, in the preschool age. Um, if there's if there's a parent of a preschool age kid or a, or a you know primary school age kid um, who is maybe looking for an avenue for to inspire their kid to occupy their kid, is there anything that you, any message that you can send to them? Well, I deliver, I, 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 mate. Yeah, it's about ha- having that child learn from an early age how to train. Yeah. Now, if, if a child likes to train, I can help that child. If a child doesn't like the train, you, I definitely can't. I said, but I deliver them programs. I um, the, these healthy lifestyle programs. I said I'm seeing it every day myself. I, I said I can. I, I personally can never not remember not being able to do a push up. Yeah. You know, and I see it, I see it regularly these days. I mean, kids ten year old and can't do a push up. Yeah. Even younger. Yeah. So, are you are you noticing it declining, like physical? Condition? Oh, correct. Yeah. Correct. Early, kids from an early age these days they're stuck on computers. Yeah. Back when we were growing up, um, we never had computers. We never had Facebook. We never had TikTok. You know. Do you even know what TikTok yeah, is? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. And um, we were on the streets. Yeah. We lived on the streets from sun up sun. Skateboards, correct. Bikes, monkey bars. Monkey bars. We were jumping off mon- monkey bars. Yeah, we're, we're having fun. Yeah. You know, these days, kids don't have that. Yeah. They'd rather stay in our house, and I deliver that. You know, I tell them how important it is to get outside and, you know, and play with your, your skateboard, wrestle with your brother, build a cubby house, build a billy cart. It's it's very important to do that as a child. There's a whole new profession now called play therapy, where I think that's uh, you know in, in that sort of things involved. Is um, so conditioning is one thing that we've noticed. But have you you would you would have um, also noticed a, a loss of coordination as well? If you're giving an instruction, right, I want your arm there, and I want you to deliver it in that direction. Are you noticing a coordination is an issue as well? Well, different ages, different abilities. Eye to hand, to feet coordination from an early age, very hard. Then they start to develop over time. Yeah. I do a lot of uh, eye to hand, to feet coordination drills, yeah. especially with our under under 11 programs. And uh, it's all about eye to hand, to feet. And most kids can't put all three together. Yeah. You, you might get the one out of 10, two out of 10, they can put it together, all right? But they develop, they develop over time. Yeah. Have you, um I was going to ask you what's your biggest success story as a coach. Um, I understand your career has been, I would consider it to be very successful, but I was going to ask you what's your most successful athlete, but I'm going to change that question. And if, if there's a, is there someone that springs into your mind where you would consider the biggest success uh, in their development? So physical, mental health, is there anyone that you've, you've gone from in the gutter to been a great member of society. Mate, I've actually had a lot. Of, yeah. yeah, I've had a lot. A is lot there of any kids. that is there any that spring into your mind when I ask that? Well, there's a lot of them. Yeah, and without naming names. Yeah, yeah. Th- can you there tell us there is that? a lot of them. Um, there's kids in here with Asperger's and um, depression issues, and yeah. have, have gone from not being able to work to now working in the security industry, now back into training. Oh, they're not going to become fighters. But, th- th- it's but they're a, now a positive influence. They're correct, channeling yeah. you. Yeah. And hopefully, is that is it starting? Because you've been doing this for over two decades. So there'd be kids that were back over 22 years ago that would now be adults. Is there anyone that you've um, inspired to, like like Father Crocker inspired you? Mate, I, look, there are a lot of kids out there. And um, like I've got kids that are running massive comp- big companies they've got managers of companies and yep. kids kids have gone from nothing from babies to d- delivering you know great family men most of them are great family people so how does that make you feel when it, you... well it makes you feel proud yeah when you run run into and they say do you remember meets little yeah. little johnny and yeah, I remember little Johnny. Yeah. Little Johnny's about 35, 36 now. Yeah, and little yeah. Johnny maybe had two paths that he could have gone down. That's correct. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of them kids come through those gyms. That's awesome. So yeah, you got your look. It's it's had its bad stories in the days. When I say bad stories, some children have gone off the rails and gone that way. But the last, I reckon, the last ten to twelve years, this gym is just going straight. Very positive gym. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, and if if there's any if there's any adults watching this and they're 
they're perhaps thinking, well, that sounds really good. I maybe, I get down at times and I'm not very fit. Um, I, show, I get out of breath when I'm walking up the stairs. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's a bit intimidating to come into a, a gym setting like this. Is there anything that you can say that would encourage someone like that? Boxing is, is a very demanding sport. Um, I, I, what I do say to people like that is get some form of um, get some form of fitness behind you, some base yeah. fitness before you come to a boxing gym. Yeah. I said, but coming into a boxing gym, as you said, it is intimidating. Yeah. You know, but we try to make it as as, as friendly as we can for for um, um, them sort of people. We have conditioning classes for them, yeah. and um, we we range from anything in a conditioning class from a twelve year old right up to sixty five. Yeah. You know, so we have different abilities that train here, and they love training. They love being part of a boxing environment. They love following the kids in the boxing programs. So it's good. It's like a little community-based gym. Well, it is a community-based gym. One of so we deal a lot with those sort of people as well, and uh, in our allied health practice. So um, we've got osteopaths and exercise physiologists and massage therapists and podiatrists that um, can. I normally suggest that they start with getting their body assessed. So we do functional movement screening where we're assessing if something's not moving right or they're not controlling a particular movement or they're not doing something right or there's tightness or weakness. I normally say that's the, that's the point to start with. And then we want to sort of build a foundation of mobility and strength with perhaps, you know, getting fit and getting lean and being able to kick butt being the goal, um, but starting with some foundation work. Well, that's a great way to, uh, to work, uh, put them programs together, Adam. Uh, in saying that, most of the people that I come into this gym, the first question I get is how health. First question I'll ask is how healthy are you? Have yeah. you trained before? Yeah. Do you think you'll be able to handle a boxing program? You know, um, they're very demanding boxing programs, and, yeah. and to know that they've been assessed by someone like yourself and they're ready to go for that program is even better. That we just find that that's the, the, the most efficient way to get there because if you have someone that goes in too hard too fast, then I'd hate for someone who's inspired and overcomes their fear of going into a gym like this, turns up, does their best for you because you're pushing them hard and then they just they, they pull up, they're injured and then it sets them back. So um, normally what I suggest if you've got someone with that sort of setting is that get checked, get anything um, treated, hands-on treatment is really good for freeing up stiff areas and tight areas and things like that first, then work on foundation of, of mobility. The same way you wouldn't build a building without building no, a foundation, foundation first. Yeah. So. I, find, I find of a lot of boxers, um, I watched young Tim Zhu the other day training for his fight against Jeff Horn and um, I had a young, young boy from here, young boxer from here up there sparring him and I watched my young boxer getting uh, warming up for the fight, which took him about 10 minutes. minutes. And I watched young Tim, Tim Zhu warming up for his. And he probably took about 45 minutes to warm up yeah. before he, they even jumped in that ring. So stre stretching, uh, stretching before fights and stretching after fights is very important. I said, but, but um, as long as I've been around too, I said, stretching was never an important issue for me. And today I'm paying for it. Yeah. And you know, I'm trying to educate it through, I'm, I'm trying to educate it through my young boxers how important it is, how to wind down, how to you know stretch up. But you know it's up to them to do it, and it's if they don't do it, this is what's going to happen. We're going to have injury after injury. Well, if there's any young boxers watching this, or there's any young athletes, what I, my message is is that there's a lot of research that proves that dynamic warm up, uh, which is the when you when you watch a pro soccer team play or a pro football team, you're going to see them doing leg swings and lunge and twists and stuff like that. There's really strong evidence that show that proves that doing that sort of a warm up reduces the rates of, of minor injuries. It's not going to stop you from getting concussed if you get hit too many times, or yeah. it's not going to stop you from uh, you know a major injury if there's a big impact in a football game. But um, dynamic warm up stops those little you know those little strain injuries, um, and it's it's. So what you're saying is very true. So if there's any young athletes watching this, can I encourage them to, to really listen? Because um, I was the same as a young athlete. I, was, I, I just was like, oh, yeah, just go straight on the field, straight on the court. You know, I don't need to warm up. But Tra training. I couldn't do it now. No. Well, I find it now, it's still the same. I find it very hard to stretch. Um, I do stretch. Not, 
not every day, but I do stretch. I keep myself moving. Um, but, mate, I, st I stress to all my young athletes um, it, the importance of uh, w warming up and winding down is very important. Yeah, that's a really great message. Like, it's really important to, to look after your mental health. It's really um, important to look after your cardiovascular health. But w we deal with people with mobility issues uh, and weakness and issues and things like that. So I would 100% agree that it's super important to look after yourself in terms of your mobility um, and dynamic functional warm-up should be part of that. Even like training, uh, certainly match day or you know for for a sport or um before a fight before and after a fight definitely yeah. well like i said i watched young tim zudio they uh warming up and uh, look 45 minutes of war he warmed up from his ankles right up to his neck yeah i watched him do his wrists and and it was just amazing to watch a, a young man like that put so much effort into his um regimen yeah regimen yeah. in, into his uh into his warm-up so, has has um, ha what injuries have you had over the years? Mate, I've, I don't think I've missed anything. <laughs> what injuries I, haven't you had? That's maybe a shorter list. Mate, I've got... <laughs> what have been the, what's, what's affecting you the most now? This stage, my knees, my shoulders. Yeah. Um, How's your bike riding going? Bike riding's on and off. Yeah. yeah due, due to time, really, but yeah. it, it's on and off. I had a big... I had a fall off the bike about 12 months ago, and I oh, haven't okay. been... I haven't been too good at getting back onto it lately, but um, I'm I'm trying to run. I'm running on grass. I was I was directed by your by your physios not to run again, but I'm I'm still trying to push on grass. Yeah. And um, my knees are up and down, but my worst pain at this stage is both my knees and my shoulders wear and tear. I'm holding pads every day, and yeah. My my lower back. I've got all four or five protrusions in my lower back. So what, uh, is there any advice that you can say, give to someone who's at that stage of their life where they've got an arthritic knee or they've got arthritis in their back? Is there, is there any tips that you've got that you've worked out for, for someone at that end of the... Of the, of the I would life? say flexibility. Yep. Flexibility, um, warming up, wa winding down and looking after your injury straight away. Yeah. I'm back don't in our just, days, don't mate. Just we just, with it. There was a with it. Should be right. there was a bit of a twitch there. Don't yeah. worry about it. It'll go away. That's the way it was. Yeah. Our coaches, it'll go away. You'll be right. You know, they don't go away. They just get worse. Tears get worse. Yeah. I, I would maybe add one thing too, which is kind of something that we commonly see is that people, uh, so that have that have an issue like an arthritic knee or an arthritic back or a shoulder issue, that just stop activity. And there's some really strong research that shows that staying active, keeping up with maybe lower impact exercise or things like cycling for a knee are actually really, really positive, much better uh, positive outcomes long term than if you do nothing. And it's really interesting that um, exercise, the appropriate, let's call it appropriate exercise because I don't want you, if you've got a severely arthritic knee, I don't want you going doing plyometric jumping or anything, but appropriate exercise uh, has been proven to be more effective than uh, surgical procedures like arthroscopy. So um, I think you're absolutely right. Maintaining maintaining your mobility and your flexibility is really important, but also your conditioning, I think, conditioning. would be another thing I would add. So there's a lot of people that aren't like you that don't train, that, that perhaps um, see pain as a, as, a, as a gate in front of them or as a barrier to stop them from, from doing it. Well, like, what I can't understand, I see it all the time, and I explain to my my people that I condition. Conditioning exercises, you can do about six, six free sets of 10 of different exercises and you can do them within six minutes. Yeah. People think it takes all day to walk into a gym and do a weight program. It doesn't to get on the floor and do your free sets of 10 push-ups, yeah. your tricep bends, your sit-ups, your planks. That's, that can all be done in under 10 minutes. Yeah. Sometimes under five minutes. At the end of training, we do them all and I, I emphasize to my group. I says everyone makes everyone just says they can't train because they got no time. Yeah. You've just done three sets of exercises, or maybe yep. four sets of exercises within six minutes at the end of training. We get that all the time. We I hear it all the like time. Blue in the face about exercise, um, and it's something that um, that we we battle. Our allied health providers everywhere battle with that. That the the yeah, I don't have time. I think that it's um. 
Yeah, you're exactly right. It's about it's getting right. motivated. Like my wife will say, oh, honey, you should just get out of bed. I yeah. said, no, I just rode 60 Ks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, this is what it's like. It's about being motivated. Yeah. If you really want to ride, you'll get out of bed. Yeah. If you really want to run, you'll get out of bed and do it. But sometimes having a social setting like this uh, really helps with that. So. Like I struggle for, I'm a massive advocate for exercise, love exercise, love training, love cycling, love boxing, all that sort of thing. But if I was to do it on my own, I would really struggle. And I think there's a lot of people that are probably the same, where if you go, I know that if I go to a group session, there's a time that it's specific, it's in my diary, I'm gonna turn up, that's the only motivation I need. There's gonna be other people there and I'm gonna do what the trainer tells me to do. And that's so, a, a lot of people do think like that. I'm a person that loves to train by myself. Yeah. I love to find a bit of isolation somewhere and train by myself. You know, I'll, I'll close the, the doors here and train in here by myself. That's my inner peace. Yeah. And I love to do that. A lot of people like group sessions. Group sessions are very essential, essential for a lot of different people. Yeah. They love to be with different people. Yeah. It motivates them. You know, and, and, and it does. For me to run with someone, it's great. Yeah. For me to run by myself, it, it's even better. Yeah, so sometimes, sometimes you might want to run with someone, sometimes you, you might want to run on, on your own. That's right. Yeah. But every, and everyone's different. I think the key thing is knowing which one you are or are you in between. So maybe you like a bit of both. Um, so maybe you've, you, you do some stuff at home on your own and you do a, a boxing class once a week. And emphasising about these injuries. Like I've got multiple injuries. If I get up in the morning and my knees are giving me grief, I will do weights. Yep. If my shoulders are giving me grief, I will go for a run. Vice versa, you always find something. And you're listening to your body. Correct. But you're not sitting on the lounge doing no. nothing going, my shoulder hurts no. today, I can't do anything. That's right. So I guess that's probably one of the take home messages from, the, from this chat that we've had is to, to not give up, not let pain defeat you, to realize that um, getting checked is probably a good um, starting point but there's also strong research that exercise helps pain um, and that if everyone's different, you, a group setting might be appropriate for one person, it might be not appropriate for And them. all these fads that are out there, look, look, it's about healthy lifestyle. It's not about how you look, having a six pack. Then days are gone. You get to a certain age in life, you're not gonna burn calories like you used to. Yeah. All right, it's about being healthy. It's about watching in, your belt. In your mind. Correct. And in, and in, your, in your body. As long as your body is strong, yeah. if you're carrying a little bit of body, body fat, it means nothing. All right? People are going to get away from these fads of, of having a body that looks to perfection. Well, like cars. Have you got an old car and you restore an old car? At the end of the day, it's still old. Yeah. It's the same as the human body. The human body is the same. Yeah. doesn't matter what you do to that body. It is old yeah. for your age. I love, the, I love the car analogy, I use that all the time. So like I say, uh, your body is the same as a car. It's, doesn't, it, it, it's, built to, it's built to be used. So a car actually operates better when it's used regularly than if it was to sit in a garage. That's right. And it works better if you fuel it with good fuel. Exactly, you know? that's so, right. So fuel your body with good fuel and get out and get moving. Put the but, right. But you don't have to flog it. That's right. You don't have to do a burnout that's around right. every corner. No, that's, like, that's right. going yeah, too yeah, far. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's about looking after your body. Yeah. You treat your body like a temple, I say. And treat your body like it's the only one you've got. That's right. And if you treat it right, it'll pay you back. Yeah, for sure. If you don't treat it right, it's going to work hard. Like today, running up them hills today yeah. was working hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's been awesome chatting Thank to you. you. Thank you. Thanks very much for your time, Vito. Yeah. Um, if you guys have got any questions for, for myself or for Vito, feel free to comment under the, the, the video below. Um, and we'll talk to you soon. And if you live in Dapto, feel free Come to drop in. Absolutely. Come and check out Crocker's Gym. We're at behind the Dandaloo Hotel. Thank you. Out of their corner. And um, Vito goes after his man. And he's really clubbed him with three and four punches.